every trial is different, right? It takes time. Um, so what, what's the message that I guess you have with your investors about the progress that you continue to make and the message that you uh, most importantly want to get through to them? Hey, everyone, welcome to our TDR Cannabis Exclusive. As we welcome in a guest we have regulatory conversations with, and it's been a few weeks, actually a few months since we last checked in. He's the CEO of InMed Pharmaceuticals, Eric Adams. Good to see you again. How are things? Doing great. Good to see you as well. Good to see you. Uh, interesting times in the cannabis landscape, is it not? <laughs> it is, and certainly for cannabinoid medicines, it's even more interesting. So, uh... Yeah. Well, let's let's get an update. I know it's been like, I think it's back in February since we last spoke, but uh, our last interview, we touched on how the primary for a focus this year is going to center on your trial. So first off, congrats on completing the enrollment in your phase two clinical trial and the treatment of, ep hopefully I'm pronouncing this correctly, epidermolysis bullosa. Is that correct? It's very close. Epidermolysis bullosa uh, or EB. Let's just call it EB. It keeps it simple that way. Let's call it EB. <laughs> <laughs> so in the company's view, uh, needless to say, this is a big milestone for the uh, company. So let's first understand the importance of this announcement completing a phase two. Yeah, well, it's been a long road to actually get the product into human clinical trials. And now that we're treating diseased individuals, it's going to be important to kind of see where the real benefit is of this product. There's a number of different okay. things that we were looking at um, in terms of endpoints. Uh, and we designed a very um, intricate trial to try and suss out as much information as we can. So now we have uh, completed enrollment with 19 patients. Uh, and we will complete uh, patient treatment and close the database and then actually do the data analysis to see what the potential outcomes are there. Well, that's encouraging. So it's always, do we, do we look at or do we see a phase three then potentially around the corner? Well, let's hope so. I mean, the, the reason that we designed this uh, phase two the way we did uh, is to try and el elicit from the application of the product where it's going to be the most beneficial in this patient population. So right. it was a very uh, interesting design where each patient had to have two similar areas, uh, wound areas, for instance, uh, on their body. So if they have a wound on one arm, they had to have a, a wound on the other arm that's not only of the same size and severity, but also at the same process uh, in the wound healing process. So the same stage in wound healing. So... Uh, it took us right. a while to find these patients because of that match, what we call a matched index. Uh, this is the, okay. the way to really get the best data. So, for instance, if you and I were both in this trial, if I were randomized to receive the just the cream by itself and you were randomized to receive the drug plus the cream, um, it'd be very difficult to, to measure what the outcomes are because we have different kinds of skin. Uh, we live in different environments. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors that, that would make it very difficult. So when you put both wounds on the same patient or when the patient presents with both uh, wound areas, you know that they have the same skin on both of those areas, that you know that they're going to heal yep. the same yep. way. You know that they live in the same environment, that they're going to be treated the same way. So it's a more complex trial design, and because of that, it was uh, it took us a while to enroll these patients. But now we have, and we're going to um, you know finish uh, treatment, lock the database, and then start uh, collecting the data. Now, what we're looking for is an indication, a trend towards improvement of the uh, area that was treated with the CBN cream versus yep. just the cream okay. alone, because a lot of times the vehicle, just the cream itself, can have an effect on some of these outcomes. So you're looking for a difference between those two. Uh, and we're looking at things such as pain, uh, itch, inflammation, and wound yep. healing. <clears throat> so even though it's only a 19 patient trial, we should be able to see some indications as to where the product has benefit um, in these different outcomes. Um, and you know, when you see those benefits, it could be, it could be none, which you know, that's not what we're hoping for here. But it could be one, maybe two of these different outcomes. And when you see that and you feel confident about it, then you can design your future trials around much bigger patient populations, specifically looking at these, these outcomes. So no easy task, it appears, when you look on paper to enroll 19 patients, which took close to a year. Maybe explain to us what the process that was like so people to have a better understanding as the timeline as to why it took you know, close to a year to enroll 
19 patients. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with what I just described in terms of finding matched index areas on a patient. So someone okay. someone might present yeah. and they have one large wound area on one arm or say on their leg, but the other one may not be as big. Uh, it may be at a different stage of wound healing. Um, so that person would fall out. We wouldn't be able to treat them. Uh, but we did go to uh, you know several sites around Europe and in Israel. Uh, we, we tried to cast a very broad net so that we can get these patients in um, and have them screened uh, to get them enrolled in the trial. Um, you know, it's not it's just not very straightforward. Once you once you identify somebody. No trial is. Right? <laughs> once you once you identify the potential patients, they have to come in. They have to meet with the investigator and, and his team. They have to look at the areas that might be treated. Um, they have to look at the history of, you know, whether they've used other cannabinoid products. Uh, and if they have, then there has to be a washout period um, uh, so that you don't get any overlap of effect. Uh, this washout period, you know, may be long enough that by the time they come back after the washout, the wounds are no longer there or the, the areas no longer match. So, you know, we, we had to screen a lot of patients in order to find the ones that were eligible and met all of the eligibility criteria uh, for this trial. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Well, in the press release, and you said it just earlier, that you stated this is the first time that CBN has completed a phase two clinical trial, which is strong, strong feedback. So can you explain the relevance of this and what happens next uh, as you enter into, say, like I said, hopefully positive data? And, uh, you know, I don't want to put words uh, in anyone's uh, mouth, but uh, a, a potential phase three. Yeah. So um, again, we're going to have to see what the data says, and you know, the the it's really a very important go no go for this program. Um, if if yeah. the data is is um, not very clear, if it doesn't point you know directionally in in one application for this uh, drug or another, then it's going to be difficult to justify the additional spend going forward. Because from here, it just gets more and more expensive. Um, yeah, of course. You know, we also have to consider that if the data is strong enough to justify going forward, is this a, uh, a proper time to look to partner it out to someone who has, uh, you know, bigger bandwidth, uh, more knowledge in phase three trials, uh, deeper pockets to be able to pay for this. Uh, so, you know, sometime in the second half of the summer, we'll be in a position to uh, analyze the data, um, understand, you know, where this product can go. Um, and potentially, you know, start some business development discussions around uh, partnering it out. Yeah, I was just going to say that. So you're looking at timeline around summertime <clears throat> to uh, reveal the data. And then if positive, like you said, a potential next steps would be to get possibly uh, sponsorship opportunities. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're really come to a fork in the road where we could certainly, well, you know, one outcome is that we, we, it does, the data doesn't justify moving forward. That's always uh, a possibility. A uh, second possibility is that it's strong enough that, you know, we can identify investors that are willing to, t you know, go with us on this journey to take it ourselves into a, uh, a later stage clinical trial, whether it's a phase 2B or a phase 2B3 or a phase 3, yeah. you know, that's still to be determined. Um, or we could we could certainly um, partner it out, uh, you know, to, to someone else who, who, like I said, has the bandwidth to move this forward. Uh, so those are all possibilities. It's too early for us to project, you know, which one it's going to be. Shows, though, that CBN, though, you know, we still know very little about it, but it's incredible to see the amount of research that's being dedicated towards it now, right? Yeah, there are some other studies that um, are looking at this. I'm not aware uh, of the, the depth uh, that the other companies have gone to to really, you know, study it. I mean, we have, yep. you know dozens and dozens of safety studies that we conducted. We, we conducted uh, multiple phase one studies uh, in healthy individuals. Uh, you know, we're now completing, uh, looking to complete the phase two study. So we've certainly invested a, a great deal in this. There's other people who, you know, may have an oral formulation that they're looking at. Um, you know, it's, you know, a lot of these feel more like they're the health and wellness side of things rather than the pharmaceutical approach. Uh, but it is a, a product of high interest. Um, and, uh, you know, we want to be, you know, part of the solution to to understanding, you know, what this uh, compound can do and, and bring that to market if, if it's warranted. Have you had conversations with potential partners just on the overall progress and awareness of the trial that's going on right now? Yeah, I can't speak to that directly. But in general, you know, we have garnered as a company uh, interest from several parties that are um, you know potentially interested in either the indications that we are pursuing, so be it EB or glaucoma or some of the other ones, 
the individual products that we're pursuing. Um, so, you know, there is a there is an interest overall, um, and mm -hmm. uh, but I can't really speak to any anything in particular. Makes sense. Let's quick turn to the rest of your uh, pipeline. Uh, maybe remind um, our viewers of the company's two other pharmaceutical programs and what stages they're currently at. Sure. Well, we have the INM088 program where we're looking at the same cannabinoid, uh, cannabinol or CBN, uh, and its application in glaucoma. Uh, that one is still in the preclinical stage and we'll be, okay. we're scheduled to enter human clinical trials in 2024. Um, Behind that, we have a couple other research programs. One in particular that we're pretty excited about is the 900 series program where we're looking at neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's um, and Parkinson's, for instance. Um, we've not yet uh, named the final uh, drug candidate. We're, we're screening a couple of alternatives that we think will be uh, could, could hold potential there. Um, but interestingly, you know, as we go forward, we're starting to look at cannabinoid analogs which are slight modifications of, of these compounds that, that can make them either more efficacious uh, or safer uh, or you know, easier to deliver. Um, the important part of that is not only the, the outcome, but also the fact that we will own the patent on those. Um, you, know, you can't own the patent on naturally occurring cannabinoids like CBN or CBD. Uh, you, can, you can patent the use of them, you can patent the formulation of them, but these analogs, we can actually own the underlying patent on the uh, molecule itself. It's the biggest thing you learn about these trials. I know it's a broad question, but like you said earlier, every trial is different, right? It takes time. Um, so what, what's the message that I guess you have with your investors about the progress that you continue to make and the message that you uh, most importantly want to get through to them? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly something that takes a lot of time, um, but you know, we've been patient. Uh, we've applied our resources uh, in a very smart fashion. Um, we've been able to move our programs forward in a meaningful way with uh, not a lot of resources. We'll continue to do that. Um, so on the pharmaceutical side, you know, again, it's, it, it's going to take time. These things do take a lot of time, um, but we feel confident that we'll be able to show some, uh, some real outcomes with these products. Um, at the same time, we have the Bay Medica Health and Wellness, where we manufacture yeah. bulk cannabinoids uh, for other people to use in their over-the-counter products. Um, and we've seen some, um, you know, impressive growth, uh, you know, just last year on quarter over quarter was pretty strong. It's a very interesting side of the business. And again, I think interest um, by the consumer is very strong and we'll continue to see, um, uh, you know, improvement uh, quarter over quarter in our revenues there too. So in addition to revealing data, as you said, in the midsummer, what are key milestones that investors should expect uh, between, you know, now and let's say, I don't know, like the next three to six months? Well, we'll provide an update on the 089 pro, uh, program, which is uh, a, an analog program uh, where we're looking at other ocular indications beyond just glaucoma. Um, so we should have some data, uh, I'm thinking in the later half of the year. Uh, on that, uh, we'll announce which drug candidate we're moving forward in the 900 series program for, for the Alzheimer's. And of course, the yeah. 755 uh, data in EB will be, will be a big uh, milestone for us. Lots on the go, that's for sure. Interesting times, as I said off the top, public equity side and cannabis has been challenging to say the least. But do you think we're going to get to a point where the pharma side of cannabis definitely starts to separate themselves from what goes on with the uh, public equity side with the CPG model? Because uh, it appears in their early stages, it was just like everything was tied in. But yeah. we're definitely starting to get a better graduation of the actual you know industry it's maturing and people are understanding it more do you feel that same way where people are starting to differentiate the two i think so i mean uh fortunately or unfortunately when gw pharma was bought by jazz uh for yeah. seven billion dollars um, i don't know if that was good or bad for us um certainly it it uh you know kind of uh, uh drew a line in the sand that says you know if you can develop these compounds uh, for pharmaceutical yeah. applications, even without the underlying patent, there's a very healthy opportunity there uh, and potential for a very healthy exit as well. Um, I, I think GW now being gone, uh, you know, they're not out there beating the drum as loud as they were before, right? Because it's now part of a, a much broader organization that's focused on specific kinds of diseases. Yeah. So, but it was certainly a very, um, you know, it was a great outcome for investors. Uh, similar to what we're trying to do, um, you know, is, is build pharmaceutical applications here in, 
areas that have really high unmet medical needs. And if you can do that, it doesn't matter if it's a cannabinoid, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, if you can deliver uh, meaningful outcomes to these patient populations that don't have a lot of other alternatives, uh, you know, you can, you can establish a very strong presence in, in those markets. Yeah. I was going to ask you, like, do you see similarities like in the early days of GW as to what you're executing now? Certainly, you know, as we're trying to learn more and more about CBN, for instance, and then as we roll into the analogs that we're looking at, um, just establishing a fundamental scientific understanding as to what they do and do not do uh, in the human body. Um, you know, that's important. Um, you know, so we're going to continue down that path. You know, we're a science-based company. You know, everyone at, at InMed uh, has a pharmaceutical drug development background. Uh, that's, that's our pedigree, and that's what we'll continue to focus on. Well, stay focused. Appreciate the update, and uh, always great chatting with you, and let's keep in touch. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks, Eric. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about the emerging industries that we cover, then leave a comment below and let us know who you want us to interview, the questions you want asked, and the information that you want to learn. We want to hear from you. As usual, click on that bell for all notifications to get the latest information. Share this video with your network. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we would not be here without you. Thanks for watching, everyone.